Well, things continue to go wrong for the Australian swim team ahead of the World Championships in Rome. While stars of the pool have been coming down with illness and injury, the team lost 24 bags in transit from Manchester to Italy via Munich. Luckily, everyone's racing suits and goggles were in their carry-on luggage. Joining us now in the studio, Olympic gold medalist and Sky News swimming commentator Kieran Perkins. Morning, Kieran. How are you, James? Very well indeed. Could you think of anything worse? Oh, look, it's it, it's one of those things. You mentioned that everyone had their, their swimming gear and their backpacks with yep. them to get on the plane because you know someone's going to lose a bag when you've got 70-odd people travelling at the same time. It, it's going to happen to somebody. And there is actually nothing more embarrassing than turning up to a pool with none of your swimming gear. That so you always true. carry that with you. Yeah, head coach Alan Thompson said it is standard protocol. Absolutely. They make sure it's in Absolutely. their hand when they get there. Now, not only was that an issue for the Aussies too, they've had a bit of illness and injury as we heard. Eamon Sullivan, he's back home. Mm. And of course, we're all looking forward to seeing him and Elaine Bernard go head to head because they've been throwing that world record between <laughs> them. Chronic fatigue. Where is he at at the moment? Look, it's in a difficult position because, you know, you don't want to miss a major championships like this. And, and there's that added tinge of, you know, Bernard's taken the record from him. So you know that he wants to get over there and get it back. But he's made the right decision. You need to come home, rest, recover. Chronic fatigue is one of those things you don't mess with. If, if, if you don't get on top of it very early, you can, you can be ill for years. It's not just a, a couple of months, couple of weeks. It can go for years. So... Get home, get over it, make sure you're well and be ready for uh, London. We're seeing some pictures now of Eamon flashing back to 2008 and what he was doing ahead of the Olympic Games and that's what we want to see. Mm. Chronic fatigue also pretty common too uh, amongst swimming ranks and these kind of endurance type sports, isn't it? Absolutely. With the, the level of, of training that these guys do and the, the amount of work, you know, you, you can become physically run down quite easily. And, uh, you know, look, Eamon's always been a little bit fragile physically in that regard. You know, he's always suffered from the odd injury or illness along the way and has had to manage himself probably better than most and obviously with the, the the travel routine getting over to Europe competing and training there for a while mm. just to, to prepare himself for Rome has just been a little bit too much. Steph too, uh, Stephanie Rice of course the pressure on her heading into this especially for the 200 and the 400 individual medley being the world record holder and of course the Olympic gold medalist she's always seems to have a sniffle or a sore throat. <laughs> and Coach Michael Bowl says look it's it's happening but heading into this it's hoped that within the week from when it's happened last weekend to Sunday when it all gets underway, she will recover. Apparently she was all smiles when everyone was waiting for their baggage yeah. in Munich. So where, where is she at as well? Because we know the pressure that's on her and, of course, the competitors seem to be edging, edging closer and closer. It's been really interesting listening to, to Steph talk right in the lead-up to mm -hmm. this because, you know, there's that coming back from the Olympics and, of course, she got all the party girl stuff, which, which everyone jumped on for a while there. But uh, I, I actually saw her and Michael, her coach, um, a few weeks ago and just before they went overseas and, and they were both relaxed, happy. She's fit, training really well, looking forward to, to some great performances. But at the same time, you don't want to talk yourself up up too much when you're uh, when you're coming back because to, to to go from time off after Olympics back to a World Championships, you know how how's my race fitness? Am I going to be quite right? There's a few little questions in the back of your mind, so it doesn't hurt to have you know a little bit of speculation floating around as to whether or not you're ready. At this point, I wouldn't be worried. I think it sounds like it's more of a sniffle than the flu, and if that's the case, these guys are, are experts at managing it and she'll be ready. Can Steph bounce back, and if there is some sort of Olympic hangover that she does have, actually take out the 200 and the 400 at these world champs? Michael Bowles pretty confident if she's not sick. Absolutely, and th that'll be the key thing. If she can manage this, this illness and it doesn't become a, a problem for her... I, I think based on her, her training form and certainly Michael, uh, Michael Bowl, her coach, who's a pretty conservative guy, if he's relaxed and confident, you know that she's, she's in top form and ready to race. Got some pictures here of Melissa Gorman. Fantastic stuff. <laughs> of course, the stuff in the pool doesn't actually get away, underway till Sunday night, but the long distance stuff has. She didn't go too well in the 10,000 overnight. The 5,000 metre open water, this is, well, she's in there somewhere. It goes on to win it in an absolute nail biter of a finish. This kind of event, you don't expect it to go down to a nail biter when you're going 5Ks, let alone 1,500 metres like you used Look, to do. It's absolutely hilarious because the one thing that the pool swimmers always like to give the open water swimmers stick about is that you don't need to be technically very proficient because you're just thrashing away in the water for a long <laughs> time. And here we are, 5K World Championships. Look at this. Ilchenko from She's Russia. She was the favourite. <laughs> 
didn't touch the, didn't touch the thing. I mean, that's the surely you want to get there first. So hey, I might want to make sure I touch. And she was ready to go another five thousand k's. Well, it would seem that way. But obviously, Melissa's you know taken a leaf out of all the pool training and practiced those skills and technique because at the end of the day. Yeah. I mean, it's mind-blowing to think that in a 5K it could come down to hundreds of a second. But, geez, you want to be ready if it does. Yep. And Melissa obviously was. OK. Now, who can we look out for at the Swimming World Champs too? Because we've, we've heard Libby Trickett may be the real shining light for Australia with Eamon going home and Steph being sick. Mm -hmm. What are you expecting the Aussies to pull out? Look, I think the pressure's going to be on the girls, whichever way you look at it. Because even though the guys have been getting better, and obviously with, with um, Eamon and also uh, Hayden Stokel, who's, who's, who's been sick, you know starting to get up there there's still that sense that the girls are, are going to be the strong competitors and you know when you start thinking of names like um, Emily Seabom and Kate Campbell you know that there's some young talent coming through yeah. and this could be their chance to step up you know they've they've come out of the the Olympics probably not performing as well as they'd hoped to and now the world championships a little bit more mature a little bit older and and ready to absolutely fire Okay, some stats for you. 135 world records, long and short course, fallen since February 2008. The Speedo LZR, which of course was the big topic mm. last year heading into the Olympic Games. We've got the Adidas Hydra foil. We've got Arena coming through with all their different types of suits. Are we going to be debating the suit for the next week and a half, two weeks? Absolutely. There, there is absolutely no doubt that all of the results that come out of these championships will be prefaced by which suit you're wearing and, and how much of an effect has that had on the, 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 the race results. And, 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 and this is the thing that angers all of us in, 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 in swimming. You know, we, we've always been a sport that at the end of the day, it's human being versus human being. You know, you're all sharing the same pool, so th there's no extraneous techni technological thing that was making the difference. Yet here we are in 2009, and all we can talk about is, you know, is, is the Jacob suit going to provide that little bit, little bit better? Can the arena guys afford not to be wearing this? Uh, and on it goes, and, it, and it's, it's ridiculous. FINA have, have made an absolute mess of this. They... Mm. You know, they, they cannot hide from the fact that they have just absolutely stuffed this up and, and uh, you know, apologies won't fix it because it doesn't matter what happens even after this. Yep. They change the rules, they change the rules, they change the rules. All we're going to be talking about is, well, yeah, in 2009 they had those polyurethane suits. So, you know, those records, well, we're not sure about those. In the 2010, and on it goes. That's just crazy. Bring back the Dickies, I say, Kieran Perkins. <laughs> thanks for joining us, mate. Thank you.